man. How's it going, guys? Back again. Luke, we're back. Lewis is right, action time. I'm gonna stick out the tree hook trace here, guys. Just on this one. Give it 10 minutes. And see if there's anything else around. Get the rod tips in as well. Very hard to cast today. The wind is absolutely howling here. Might not sound like it on the video, but it's crazy. So I'm gonna give it an hour. Just put out that one there. Mick, yeah, I don't, um, I don't know who that man is, but he's, he's, he's always been nice to me anyway, whenever I've met him. But uh, he has a bit of a slipway cleared off. I've never seen a boat actually being launched there. But uh, it looks like an ideal spot for it. We want to uh, track the though, I'd say. And a bit of bravery.
So, back in action, two rods on the go. Uh, I'll just give you a quick uh, peek of what the, the wind is like. Probably that's not so bad. John, yeah, that's the big problem. You can see the stuff coming across the bay. I'm going to try and play out with the wind stuff. That's the new wind sock on there now guys. Hopefully that's a bit better on the south. Blowing straight this way. You can see even the gulls are struggling. Nervous about those trees. <laughs> oh. oh man. And I know we'll swap around. Oh. Serious wind going through there. Blow the hood off it fella. So, a quick recap, big rods on the right, yeah, it's howling, yeah, John, like John Tobin was saying there, this is a place that struggles badly with seaweed, so it can rip through and it can just wreck a session, so my plan is, I'm going to give it until the tide pushes up to this, off over the edge of the sand, should be around an hour, and I'm going to hit the high, higher there, I know, and I don't have a lot of hair to be blown off, so i got to mind that. So I do. We get some more baiting up done now. Kevin, yeah, it's really, it's horrible really. And I wouldn't mind, this is a place sometimes you can get really comfortable and you can fish a couple of rods, no problem. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing the weekend is supposed to be a bit better. But sure, who knows. Uh, tomorrow's uh, as bad again. So... On the, on the plus side for anybody watching, uh, you might re recall that the, the channel has uh, is eligible now to put, play ads and stuff. Barry, yeah, locked in though above there is the only problem. But the, the channel is eligible to play ads now, which I apologise for, but oh, it's for a good cause if you, uh, if you think about it that way. But I have uh, a grand total of one dollar. 35 made off the channel so far. Kamak, I hope you're enjoying a bit of fishing. Great to get uh, a few more viewers. Like I said, anybody who's not subscribed, more than welcome to do so. Help to keep the dream alive. I'm going to put out a, a bit of a, uh, oh yeah, $1.35. Unfortunately, it doesn't add up to a whole pile in euros. But look, I have to start somewhere. Now what I am going to show you, Ben, yeah, it should, they should start arriving. Not on the live streams, mind you know, but they should arrive on the other videos. So if you want to go back and watch a couple of old videos, that's really cool too. Now, story of my life, I've lost my bait elastic. But because it's a regular thing, I brought a spare. Now what I'm going to show you here is something that I really shouldn't be showing you. Um, it's what I used down below in Valencia to great effect a few years ago in a, in a competition. I think I had five or six huss and a few dogs for an, a nice win down there. And so I just bait up the bit of mackerel here. And I'll show you what I was doing to add an extra bit of scent. Now whether it works today, I don't know, but we'll find out. So that's our little bit of a mackerel bait. That's a 4 -o, so it's about two and a half inches. Now I've taken this part of the, the mackerel. I hope you'll be able to see it there. It's the it's from the belly of the mackerel. It's like a raw egg-like kind of thing. Not 100% what, what it actually is. And what I what I did is I'm going to bind that onto the back of it. A very sneaky tactic there now for anybody. A lot of you guys probably know it already, but might be something new for a couple of other guys to try out. And you get these after the deep water mark. It's the 
it's a kind of a, it is a sneaky old tactic, but it's something that can really work. So for anybody who bothered, Finn, do not notice anything about my trade today. I don't have my bait binder with me. I, uh, I left that for the matchbox. I've got a new box for the, the, the specimen fish. So I have all sorts of things inside it that I never usually have. But I must, uh, I must go through it properly. I really am hoping to get a stinger today, guys. If I do, uh, and if I'm able to show you that the proper way how to hold them and stuff, um, it should be good. It'd be hard enough with the with the weather, and not getting stabbed by him, obviously. One of the lads was telling me that the beaches in America, where he is, they are opening up again. So I'm really looking forward to seeing a couple of his, uh, his pictures come true. And if we're really lucky, he might send us an old video to share with everybody. Uh, the shark fishing and all that off the shore. Big thanks to my buddy Gavin for sorting me out for the mackerel. Man sized. Of course, had I taken it out a bit earlier, it would have been defrosted. But not to worry. Great to see big peelers around the place. Oh, and it's a spot where uh, a better cast can really help you. But I've seen a lot of good fish come in close here, too. William, man, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope to see one. Big old shark video off the shore, or even one of those big halibut. Or, 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 I don't think they count as big halibut, but I, I'd love to see a halibut caught off the shore. I know uh, Karen and Chris. Good chance of a bass here today as well with the uh, with the way that the tide is pushing and the, the surf. Well, it's not really a surf here. A black sole. I've never, I've never caught a sole. I have to say. Um, a couple of the lads, Eric in the Tralee, or sorry, the North Kerry Club had them in Cork and I've heard of them in Waterford but that's about it I know that uh, Philip O'Sullivan uh, had one in Kerry one time but the mark was uh, a closely guarded secret don't know where he got it but uh, Eric you probably remember Philip from the, the interprovincials and stuff with the Munster team and the Irish team he had, he's the only guy I've ever heard with a soul. Definitely coloured water down here is a massive help, Patrick. It just means the fish can feed an awful lot more um, carefree. They don't have to worry only about anglers. But uh, they can come in closer without fear of the birds or bigger fish. You know, it's, it's just safer. It's, it's like night for them. So they can feed an awful lot closer to shore without the fear of being attacked by anything. But the stingrays are so big, they don't really care anyway. You'll often see them sunbathing and, uh, and on places like Derrymore. If you were to go down the beach, you'd see them in the, in the surf, maybe 20 or 30 yards out, the big black shadows moving up and down the, the shallows. I always thought it was seaweed first, but then it was pointed out to me that seaweed doesn't go against the tide. Is it? This is the spot that I'd much prefer to be fishing, uh, but there was no water here all morning, so we'll see. I could have fished here, but it would have been fishing into really shallow water, and unless I was fishing for flounders, it would probably have been a waste of time. But the, the channel does come in. 
Go grab a drink there, guys. Two seconds. Yeah, there are good gideons here today now if you wanted to put on the small hooks and try for one. But. I don't think anybody came out to see a few eels being caught. But it's fantastic to get out for a, for a shot at the rays. First time this year. I had that small one, but he was only a baby. So I'm really hoping that I'm going to get a good bit of this fishing done now and as soon as they increase the limits up to uh, the 20 kilometers, we'll be free to go anywhere in the bay we want, fish the pier and that'll be a great spot to do a bit of live streaming because there'll be great coverage there. No, that's the Sleeve Mish Mountains and Derrymore behind me there that you can see. So that's uh, Derrymore Island just here and that's the Sleeve Mish across the way. No, I take a five inch sole, no problem whatsoever. No product placement. It's actually Starbucks call, but I don't think they give a shit about me doing a bit of fishing. So that's uh, Phoenix Pier straight here. Beyond that is Brandon Bay. Uh, these are the Sleeve Mish Mountains here to our left and Brandon Mountain on Far Road. That's a good spot for a lot of hill walkers and climbers. Derrymore Point is just here, great spot uh, for a fish. We've got a couple of more marks up along this way. Uh, over here is where we were fishing. Then it all depends on the stingers. They kind of do what they want, so like they'd sit down it, but the big ones, they give a right good bite and then they make a run. So you might get a 50 or 60 yard run off of them, depending on how, if they're up for it. Sometimes they just come in like a sack of spuds, other times they tear you up and down the beach. So, it all really depends. On the lighter gear, the, the small ones, in the matches and things, they go, they go a bit nuts. I think the most exciting catch I had in a competition was uh, a flounder, a doggy, and a stingray on the bottom, about six pound. So that was a nice score in one, feet, one cast. It's actually the camazans I'm on. <laughs> There's no way he ate the oysters out of here today. Um, this is, uh, like I said, Tree Bay is famous for its oysters, but when you're up this far, it's an awful long way up, and they don't, they're not gone through any purification. So to eat them straight off of the, off of the side here, you'd want to be very, very confident. It's a Ian Gold's super match seven foot stand. It's a great job. Very, very secure. John, how's it going? As you can see, I've had to use rocks to uh, to secure the base of the rods or the stands, just to keep it safe. But it, uh, for anyone that was tuned in the last day, it really broke my heart. Hi, Kevin. I, I started around twelve or five past. I just had a doggy. We've been fishing the bigger baits, so not really expecting a whole pile unless it's something big. But I did put out three smaller baits on this one. I couldn't resist it just to see it was the flounders here. Bob, how's it going? I, I don't know, I, I, is it kiss kiss Bob? <laughs> or what way would you like to be called? <laughs> but Bob, it's good to see you. Great to have everyone coming and uh, joining in, guys. I know it's the only live sport that you can watch, if you call it that, but... If we are trapped inside for another little bit, I hope to get out a good bit more often and show off a bit more of the bay to you, the different species. 
But I am looking. Fair play to you, Bob, man. Uh, a lot of subs recently, which is brilliant. I heard a good few people on, the, on one of the Facebook pages giving out that they were losing subs. But it turned out they had bought all the subs and uh, YouTube just wiped them all off. So I think it cost them a couple of hundred dollars for all their subs and uh, they lost them all. I was going to be sitting down drinking coffee, but it's time to change the trace, I'd say. So I'm going to get the up and over. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? The pubs is a thing. Uh, I think we're all kind of missing, but I think we're all missing meeting the family a bit as well. Like you, you just like I have a few buddies there that I'd only meet maybe once a month or so. But you know when you can't meet them or even like the brothers there and things for a bit of fishing or even a bit of chat. Like it's something that you don't really you take for granted. But a lot of us as well can't get to see the mothers and fathers. So I hope you'll be treating them an awful lot better. And uh, realising this is what it's going to be like someday that we won't be able to see them. So cherish them. Unless they break your heart, of course. But this is what we're going with. Full crab. Six ounce laid. So we're going to give that a bit of a thump. Swing you around a bit there now, so you can see the old uh, the retrieval. Finn, you only like the pulley rigs because they're easy to make. Because you're lazy as sin. All right, I hope you can see me there now. Simone, Simone, I promised I'd learn a bit for you, but. Uh, Figure it out. Give me a minute.
I got battered. That was awful. <laughs> Oh my god. David, man, I hope nothing too serious. Uh, I've only managed a doggy today, but we kind of knew that it was going to be slower than normal fishing for the bigger fish. Thought I had something on there, but just goes to show. It just goes to show it's tough. It's really, yeah, you're back under the, the top of the, of the, um, of the carpet. I tell you what though, that wind is no joke guys. Oh, I was a thinking that's a pain, isn't it? Uh, I really hope I didn't leave it behind me. No doubt I located eventually. I have to go back in that comment. Is it a seven pound bass? Keith. 7.2. Finn loves making pulley rigs as well because he's lazy out. So he reckons they're a great rig just because of laziness really, I think. No. Might level up things there a bit. I wonder if I put that rod out a bit further like I can see it. I never fished above there or, or even heard of anyone fishing up there, Finton. What, what are you kind of aiming for in that area? I, I don't get that, I get that one. I missed it. Brenda, no, one second. That was a stroke of pure genius. But, my, but Finn only likes to build them, he won't make any other rigs. It's not out of necessity, because they're really quick. Laziness comes in. Finn, you're making it up. You're killing me here. Nice one, Keith. Now I have to admit, I put back the first sizable bass that I got. So... I am hoping to get one for the barbecue. Yeah, Finn, say, Finn can't say too much when he's got his mom that makes rigs as well in the house. He often tends to uh, get his hands on a couple. Allegedly, isn't that right, Finn? But Peters have seen better days. No, no, don't be fighting with your mother on YouTube, Finn. I think we're going to get a bit of a roasting with the weed here. That one I just put out is kind of clicking away already. I'm not sure you do a whole pile of digging yourself. The old spinal cord is be at you. <laughs> Tim, it's quite possible. They could be in the same room arguing as well. <laughs> Finn's been minnow fishing lately. It's the only body of water that's close to him. So he's been terrorizing the minnow population in the area.
the wind has died down a nice little bit now, thankfully. See the left one is just kicking away there. An awful sign that I picked up a ball of weed. But for anyone just tuning in there, the, the IFI guidelines that were kind of released last night about the fishing are saying you can go five kilometers from home. They, they took out the time period in it so I can fish away a bit more freely. And um, also, it's great that they, the over 70s can get out a bit better, a bit more freedom as well. I missed that. I, I feel like I got given out. They all scroll down, so I can only ever see about two or three comments at a time. So if a few comments come in, or if, if the uh, if the coverage drops and comes back in, oh Alison, of course we miss you. Who else would give out to me if I didn't have you? Like, uh, the most memorable catch from this spot was uh, Aidan O'Halloran during a competition. He had a 58 pound stingray. An absolute bruiser of a, of a stinger, so it was. And he had it on a small match hook with a, a tiny little quarter crab bait fishing for the flounders. But it took him a good while to land it. A serious care involved. I'm going to get that one in now on the right. See if we can't get anything out of it. I'll spin you around again. It should be the kind of area that I'll be retrieving. They do not need to come near the water.
Who said weed fish? Look, we'll compare smiles. Oh, you can see him there now. Ah, there we go. Lovely little tourney. Johnny, it's going good. <laughs> uh, a little, uh, a little tourney there now. And a little ray. The one they, the draw on the left has got a load of weed on it. So. I'll have to work on the dead, Seamus. <laughs> I'm over the moon. There you go, guys. I won't mess around with him. He's only small. You can see how dark the water is here now. Oh, there you go. Yeah, down onto my foot he went. Try not to stand at him now. So there you go guys, mission accomplished. <laughs> I can't believe it, I'm delighted. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a screenshot of that one with this smiling. <laughs> like a rehab. Oh no, oh no. No, there you go. I'm delighted with myself. A small little tourney. <laughs> I'm going to get that one back, but again, that was only a short lob because I had the bigger bait on. So, get out straight away again, there might be something Now guys, it's not the big fish that we were hoping for, but I'm clearly delighted anyway. I know the bread. That's what's left of the uh, the big bait that he had a hold of. There's a pretty good sized mackerel bait that he had to go off there. Oh, I must say, I am happy. It's down the spa. Yeah, I think the other one, Finn has, has kind of been clicking away nice and handy, so I'm gonna to have to bring it in anyway, because I'd say there's a lot of weed at the very least. But we get that one out of the way. Mackerel, king of the baits today, guys. Well. Yeah, that's cold and horrible. <clears throat> Freezing cold. <laughs> right. Got the tree hook trace again. Yeah, geez, Johnny be brilliant. This is the tree hook loop rig that I'm using there on that one. I'd say I've got a lot of weed on this. I'm gonna pull this forward and see, can I uh, 
show you me possibly falling into the water again. How does that look there now? It's a bit better. No. It's actually gone a, a good bit down, so. Darren, that's the thing, man, isn't it? When we're there and we have the opportunity to fish, we're kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll go the next day, I'll go the next day. Then it's taken away from us. And uh, we know it, didn't we? We've got to fuck things up a bit. See, there's, a, there's two more anglers after arriving down below now. Don't recognise them, but, but say hello on the way out. Something a bit more special here, guys, than I've been before. It's like I had stuff to come up to the top of the water. Feels like a fish.
I just turned off for a second. Nice tarny. I'm gonna push you back in the stand here, guys. The wind has dropped off an awful lot, so. The, yeah, this is the spot I prefer to fish, Seamus, if I could, generally. So uh, it's great that there's a few fish show up when you do. Finn, good man yourself. Now, put you up here. It's the great thing about the new um, new tripod. It's really it's really solid. Oh, lovely! Straight out, guys. Want to see that smile again? Lovely thorny. You can see I put my hand to catch him in the water. So you can see the, the thorns on the underside of him as well. Of course you know it's a male because of the claspers. So... We're feeling good guys, we're feeling good. I wish I brought my towel to hold his tail with. No. I'll just hold him for a minute in the water. Yes, I know, yeah. Did anybody see that video of the, the lady in, uh, or the girl in America that was got all the grief for, for her Irish dancing? They were saying that it was appropriating culture and everything like that. I get abuse all the time for my dancing and no one ever invited me to any parade. Oh, ah, there you go. Off he goes. No, oh, oh, a bit of a surface again. Ah, well, I managed to get the sleeve nice and wet that time. Drenched. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I get abuse for my dance moves all the time. No one invites me to any parades. Right, I'm gonna get that, uh, I have the tree hook rig ready there. Gonna get that out, but I'm gonna, only gonna leave it a few minutes. And the up and over rig is 100% correct. Oh, not the hundred list that we were hoping for, but still, still and all. If you remember, that was the big crab bait that I put out on the uh, the two hook rig. On the, uh, sorry, the pulley, but a, a pinnel hook as well. But thankfully, a nice and easy, uh, nice and easy to unhook, even though it was down a bit. It wasn't down too far, so I was able to get it pretty handy. And off he went. Uh, a lot of guys like to eat the uh, tarnies. It's it's a personal preference. I don't myself. I'd much prefer to, to catch a bass and just keep a bass. I just think that there's an awful lot of waste in a ray. 
So it's only the wings you get, and it's such a nice fish as well. I, I really love them, so I love seeing them anyway. I love fishing for them, so I, I don't bother myself, but look, I'm not the fish police, like it's up to everyone what they'd prefer. But every ray you put back makes a fella like me smile like a clown on live stream. So that's surely worth something. Ben, yeah, man, like that. Some guys love them, some guys, it's just, I just really love catching them. And uh, when I was growing up there, I didn't think that there was a whole pile of um, rays, because we were useless at catching them, so they become kind of a cult fish for us. Ashley, man, you just missed two rays and two casts, and a small dog that no, that no one really cared about. Poor old doggy. Only the match anglers care about the dogs, I think. But I got a, a nice thorny there. Where are you head for Finton, man? It's great to see you with a bit of enthusiasm back again. Really great to see you with the enthusiasm. Ashley, another guy on the way back to a bit of fishing, hopefully. So we got one ray on the mackerel and one ray on the big crab bait. After a bit of grief with the old weed. Uh, yeah, first first horny of the year. Uh, I don't think, I don't know, has anybody been out fishing for him to be honest about it? But it's the first one I've heard of anyway. The match angler was coming out on me. I put out the tree, the small tree hook trace, so that I could get a few fish for the camera. Brendan, the the, uh, the species hunt is is suspended for the time being. So that's the bait. That's what, what we're kind of doing, working with now. Uh, the species hunts are all kind of suspended. Um, Martin in the angling hub has his one suspended as well. No, so. It just means I'd have to do more fishing for all these species once things open up again. But it would, it would be very unfair for me to come out and be able to hit these species and put out the small hooks for the gobies and things. Yeah, because I, I fully support it being closed down. So I do. It, it just wouldn't be fair, you know. Seamus, that's a pier I would love to fish. Um... I've heard of some very interesting species caught off of it, so I would, uh, it's in my, it's on my list of places to go to. There's a couple of mini species that you can't really get anywhere else, well, that I don't know of anywhere else that you could get them. The wind is picking up crazy again there now. So, Garrod, yeah, man, down the spa. Couple of tourneys so far and a dog. But no stinger, but we're hopeful. I didn't think we'd be getting tourneys either. I, I, was, I was hoping for them, but you know yourselves. Definitely after losing a rig somewhere along the line. Oh, hold on. Cancel all panic. I found it. Put 
I'm gonna go with a big old mackerel bait again. I picked up a good bit of weed on the one that's just a little bit further out, which is a pain in the neck. I hope um, that there's 86 or 86 around watching. I hope the guys that were tuned in earlier aren't too disappointed. Uh, I did say that I was only going to give it to uh, to when the water came up to the edge of me there. But I think uh, a couple of one more casts might be in order. Sean Og, the walking has been cancelled, my friend, uh, and the cycling has been cancelled. You're allowed to drive now to the marks, which is superb. Um, I did have the bike ready to go until last night, and then I saw that, so. But I am going to cycle over to the marks that I fished the last couple of times. Just because uh, I was enjoying a bit of cycling as well to the marks, like it. It was old school, took me back. Now I take the big run for the big run. I think the up and over has to go back on that one again after getting the big ray on it. I know, I get a bit, a bit of rain I think as well. But what I'm going to do is... Yeah, it looks like it'll be okay to, to get down. I'm going to put you guys watching the rides for a moment. Check out the new windsock. And I just got to move the car. guys back again I've refilled the coffee as well oh catch up on a few comments there now are you talking to yourself John guys for anybody interested there we've been joined by uh 
YouTube royalty, uh, John there at the fish locker. He's uh, he's doing the uh, he's doing the business. He's all well, and uh, some of his videos are really cool. Yeah, you too, man. I know you're dying to get back out again. But uh, it's great to have lads tuning in there. So I was just thinking, we've had uh, Danny Muscops on last week watching. He's been a uh, world record holding uh, distance caster. John Dare had a couple of tuna, which is surely a record off of a small boat. Sean Oak is qualified for the World Championships. I think he's captaining the Irish. So, uh, closer to Shirley James. I can't get as far as the tanker yet, unfortunately. Yeah, you too, John. It won't be long now. Hopefully, these guidelines that they change for uh, for the UK will be a bit more forgiving for you. But it is great to see so many anglers take keeping um keeping their eyes on the guidelines and following them in the UK and Ireland. Like it'd be simple for anglers to sneak out to get to places. Like we know spots that that the guardy and the police and the authorities would never find. So if we wanted to, we could really, we could go where we wished, but we don't. Want to, we're not doing that. So it's a it's a big pat in the back for the anglers. Now the rod on the left side has gone kamikaze down. It started to rain now, and there's that famous saying, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain, but the, main, the rain in Kerry drenches you everywhere. So, get that around now. Hopefully that's not too bad. I think I'm going to be kind of go over this side of the office, but I don't want to get you out into the rain either. So, let's see how that's going. I'll see, can I move it a bit more? Depending, but that should, that should do it. I'll fish this time I don't think but we'll chase your piece of weed. Bit of excitement though.
John's still on there, he'll click, correct me if I'm wrong. So give it a C, C letters. I get a lot of that on the line, pain in the neck. And various other places. A small trick there that sometimes works if you're ever in a match situation and just like this you've ended up with a big ball of weed let me show you now sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't but if you're in a match situation and you've ended up with a big load of weed get it so that it can slide down your line like that hold it and just rip it I cannot believe that worked out so well. That's a really fast way to get a load of weed off your line, but you have to give it that momentum and you have to check your knot afterwards because sometimes it can mess it up. That's where knot covers come into it as well, I suppose. I'll put you back down here again now guys oh shit so you can uh just in case anything comes in on this rod doesn't feel like there's any i didn't really look like anything on it but we'll have a look Guys, I'm going to show you that one, one more time. So, have your lead. Your, make sure that it can uh, do everything. Hold it. And just rip it through. Remember, the most important thing after you do that is check your knot and make sure it's okay. Because it doesn't really damage it, but if it did, that did cause you to lose a fish after doing it, you go crazy.
good. So guys, I think uh, I'm gonna make those to my last two casts. Bringing in that all that wheat is it's a bit of a pain, and I not, I don't want to stay here all day either. Um, I I got work this afternoon, so we're not about 15 minutes, and we'll be ready for home time then I think. Yeah, definitely warmer coffee is a, a bit a way nicer. Get the, uh, these two traces put away. Uh, I'll go back over a few of the comments there. We'll relax for the last few minutes. Kind of through the comments there, and I'll go back over them. Yeah, John, that's the thing. <laughs> Tim, thanks for uh, thanks for <laughs> thanks for that. Shout out, guy, you know, man. Your your accent isn't exactly Hollywood yourself, so I wouldn't be slagging too much. I don't, like you get some guys who are only Ziplex, some guys who are only Century, only Akias, only whatever. Uh, that's not really something that I, that I go after. Like I'd use a rod made by a guy down the street for 10 euros if I thought it was the best rod available to me. Um, I do love the Century rods though. I do like those. Uh, I have a, a good, I've got a few of the Gravels for my match fishing. But I'd, I'd have to say if I was able to get rods for free, like Yuki Sublime are out now as well. So Yuki have kind of a rod for everything that I'd like as well. So they'd be kind of maybe the overall one at the moment. Um, but I do, I do like Century rods because there is some times when you just can't have a nice rod. It's just got to be able for the rough stuff. It's got to be able for falling off of stands weed up the line hitting the top eye or so like i said it, it so i don't really have an answer for that one but it's something like a rod for every occasion for all different types of things that was a very political answer there no wasn't it And the rods are getting pulled around immediately now. The tide is really starting to push, so. I get these put away and then start to gather myself. That has to go down as bad luck. I 
I lost you guys, but uh, I think that's a signal. Got five or six pound worth of wheat there. I'll show you the magic trick for the last time and push my luck with it. Good to be, don't think. Now guys, the second round has gone way around again, so I'll take that in, we'll have a quick chat and then I'd say it's home time. Alright guys, that's it for another day in paradise down in Kerry. Uh, exhausted, I'm going to give you one old shot of the wind here just to remind you of how much fun it is. Look at that over there. It's, uh, it's been horrible. But that little wind sock there is doing a, doing a great job for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say good luck to you lads. And uh, I'll get my way, make my way home again. Oh, Ronnie, how's it going? William, I got a few guys popping up there. Paul 
uh, as for the mullet, there's no way I'm going to be safe from this. But as soon as I can, really hoping to give that a go when we do get a bit closer. So, uh, like I said, hopefully you guys will be able to get out and do a bit of fishing now in the next couple of days. Hopefully the UK gives a shout. I will be sorry to lose all the guys that are tuned in watching. But at the same time, it's great. It'll be great to see you guys getting out again as well. So, give me one more look at the bay. And I'll say, uh, good luck guys and stay safe. And uh, like I said, if we all stick together, we'll get out of us together. So, mind yourselves guys. Uh, last my X button. Alright, here we are. Good luck lads, thanks again.